Hello, this lesson video, I would like to clarify on source documents, journals, and ledgers. Let us recap what is in the accounting flow. You must always start with source documents because these are your evidences that transactions have taken place. With the source documents, you will move on to recording them in the journals. Okay, record the transactions in the journals. Then after that, you will proceed to putting them in the ledgers, which is what we commonly know as um, T accounts. All right. And then after these ledgers are prepared, at the end of the period, we will transfer all these balances right to the trial balance. From there, we will prepare the trading profit and loss accounts. We prepare the balance sheet. And then we do analysis. This is your whole accounting flow. Now let's start right from the middle. What is the purpose of the trial balance? The purpose of the trial balance is right in the middle, right? So it checks on the accuracy of recording transactions. Where does this part come under? You will see that the first three steps will actually document this part. Okay, you have the source documents, journals, and ledgers. And the trial balance, the purpose is really to check whether you have correctly entered your debits and your credits. Then the next purpose of the trial balance is that it serves as a basis for preparation of final accounts. Where are your final accounts? Trading profit and loss as well as balance sheet. So the trial balance helps you to consolidate what, is, what has been done and to bring it forward, to put forward what is to come. And then later on, of course, we do our analysis. Source documents. This is what I want to start with. There are eight source documents. Eight source documents. So we have invoices, receipts or till slips, payment vouchers, petty cash vouchers. We have credit notes, debit notes, check counterfoils, bank statement, as well as memo. Before I go on to introduce in detail what are the eight source documents, I thought I like, I like to put certain things in perspective. So when you issue source documents, then you must be the seller. If you receive source documents, then you must be a buyer. Just imagine this. Um, if you go to the shopping mall, you do not start issuing source documents to your sellers. You know, only the sellers will do that. So you, as a buyer, will collect source documents. All right? So now I will take you through the eight source documents. We begin with invoices. Invoices are documents issued for credit sales. It could also be documents received for credit purchases. Remember earlier, the earlier slide we talked about issuing and receiving. If you issue, you must be the seller. If you receive, then you must be the buyer. And it can also be for purchases of fixed assets on credit. Now notice the word on credit. Um, on credit means money is owing, means payment has not been made. So let's just take for example, if you have made a sale on credit, it means that your customer has not paid you. As opposed to invoices, receipts and till slips. Okay, so this is a receipt, this is a till slip. Th these are documents issued acknowledging amounts received as payments from customers. So this actually means that the customers have already paid up. That's why you issue a receipt. Okay, so uh, this is your most typical case where you go to any shops and then you pay on the spot and then they give you a receipt. Now for payment vouchers or petty cash vouchers, now these are written documents to support a claim for reimbursement from petty cash. Now what is this? Now say for example, um, you have a salesperson in the company who has just taken a cab to do a business. So he wants to now claim a taxi uh, fare claim. So can he do that? Yes, of course he can. So because that was for business purpose, right? So he would have to fill in the payment voucher as seen over here. And then he will attach his, his receipt, you know, of uh, that particular uh, taxi fare and then he will submit it as a claim and the petty cash officer will be able to uh, reimburse the amount to him. Credit notes. Credit notes are documents issued for a reduction in charges. 
Whenever you see credit notes, you must remember it is returns because the minute someone returns something to you for a sale that was previously made, made it means that you would have overcharged that person instantly the minute he returns. So when that happens, you will need to um, you will need to reduce that charge. All right. So let's take a look. Sales returns. We also call it returns inwards. Remember what we said. If you issue um, some a, a source document, then you must be the seller. So sales returns. You will issue the credit notes. Okay, and if it's purchases returns or returns outwards, then you would have received the credit notes because why? You are the buyer. So you must be very clear about this because this is the biggest mistake that uh, a lot of students actually make. The next doc uh, source document is debit notes. What are these? These are documents issued to add charges to an invoice previously issued. Now, a typical example would be previously you gave the customer a 20% discount and then later on you decide that you should reduce that discount to 10% so what does that mean instantly it means that the customer should owe you more right because you're giving a lesser discount so what do you do now because previously you would have given an invoice because he hasn't paid yet so now you need to add more charges because now you decide to charge him more so then you can't send another invoice so what you will do now is to send a debit note okay so debit note are to add charges to an invoice that was already previously issued the next source document we talk about the check counterfoils now take a look at this this is your check and this is your check counterfoil. Now, this is actually portions of check that are kept by the payers. That means the person who issues the check. So let's say, for example, today I write a check. So I write pay whoever and so on. And then I will detach this check and give it to the person that I want to pay to. Now, what is my reference? Then I will write down the date. Okay, this is actually at the front, in the front of the checkbook. So you write down your date, your check number, which is this one, the check number here. And then you will write down under the reference will be who you are paying to. And then what is the amount? It is a very simple record. It is personal record. Okay, so th these are called check counterfoils. Now, just as the owner or uh, the company will record its own cash and bank transactions in the cash book. Now, you, if you have an account with the bank, the bank also prepares its statement for you. So this is a document prepared by the bank okay a bank statement is a document prepared by the bank and it details the transactions of the account of the bank's customer that's me right the owner so it details all the transactions that i have made with the bank okay in my account so this statement will be sent to the owner monthly on a monthly basis and last but not least we come to the eighth source document we call it a memo now a memo is actually a document prepared by the owner uh, himself or herself to detail internal transactions or any other transactions that do not make use of the above seven source documents some examples would be drawings of goods you can't use any of the above seven or capital contribution of assets etc now the accounting flow says that after source documents we move on to record them in the journals so here we go so journals, what are they? They are like diaries, okay? You record them in chronological order. You record the transactions in chronological order. And some other names that they can have is daybook. Journals are also called daybook. It is also called book of prime entry or book of original entry. Now there are seven journals. I want you to know that. The seven journals are cash book, petty cash book, Sales Journal, Sales Returns Journal, Purchases Journal, Purchases Returns Journal, as well as General Journal. Know that all cash and bank transactions are recorded in these two cash books, okay? Cash book and petty cash book. And then we have specialized journals, okay? Sales Journal, Sales Returns Journal, Purchases Returns Journal, as well as Purchases Journal. They are specialized journals and it is solely used for goods as well as stock. So, for instance, if you were to buy fixed assets, you don't call it, you don't put it under purchases journal, which is a common mistake.
Now, general journal will be for all other transactions. All other transactions that don't go under any of these first six. So now you have these seven journals. Now, uh, which source document will be needed for each of these journals? So now let's just take a look, okay? Now, for your cash book as well as your petty cash book, your source documents that you will rely on are really anything and everything to do with cash and bank transactions. And these will be the following source documents. You have the receipts, okay? You have the payment vouchers or petty cash vouchers, your bank statements as well as your check counterfoils. All these will be uh, using your either your bank or your cash, okay? Now, the next one for sales journal, uh, sales returns journal, purchases journal, purchases returns journal. Okay, let me just broadly put them under uh, these uh, documents that you will need. Now, for invoices, really, you will you will be uh, looking at sales journal as well as purchases journal. And remember, earlier I mentioned that sales journal and purchases journal they are only on credit. Then you will count, then it will be recorded here. So, uh, all those that are on credit, that means a payment has not been made. Then you will record it in your sales journal or purchases journal. Goods only. Okay, inventory only. So, uh, if that being said, then only uh, invoices are valid here. So, if it was a cash sales or a cash purchase, then it will definitely fall under your cash book. I repeat, so if it's a cash sales or a cash purchase, then it doesn't come under these specialized journals. It will go into your cash book. This is a very important point. Now, your credit notes, like I mentioned earlier, returns, okay? So sales returns, purchases returns, credit notes, you will use them. Now for debit notes, it's really to um, uh, add charges to a previously issued invoice. So it goes under sales journal, okay? Sales journal, okay? So uh, if you, uh, like an example that I gave you earlier, uh, you decide to reduce the discount given, so that means you are gonna charge your uh, customer more, then you will issue your debit note and it will go into your sales journal. Now, how about general journal, okay? Now, general journal, you will need uh, things like invoices. Okay, why invoices? Then again, you see, if anything to do with cash or bank, it would have already been recorded here. So some of these examples would include, for example, purchase of fixed assets on credit. You are owing Okay, you have bought uh, some fixed assets and it is, uh, you are owing the, uh, the, 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 the supplier. So the thing here is that these are not goods. These are not your stock. So you can't record it in the specialized journal. You can't record it as a purchases journal. So what, where do you record these? You record in the general journal. Okay, so you will use invoices. Now memo, earlier on I mentioned some of the items that you use memo will be like your drawings of goods, so drawings of goods, you use memo or uh, capital contribution of say fixed assets. You will use memo to record. And these, where do they go? They don't go any, they don't go into any of the six here. So they will come into number seven, general journal. And you will see over here, there's, there's this debit notes. So why is it that debit notes also appear here? Because this debit note would be more for, say for example, you forgot or you didn't charge your debtor, okay, carriage, Okay, so you actually um, wanted to uh, bill her for transport, okay, but you didn't in the previous invoice. So now that you decide to bill her for that, uh, for that carriage, you know, for that transport, then you can't put it in the sales journal, you put it inside the general journal for carriage, for transport, all right? So after we visited source documents, then we went to journals. Now we're going to move on to ledgers, which are your T accounts. Now please note that there are five ledgers, okay? So we have the cash book, petty cash book. We see them again. Okay, they have this dual function of um, being both a journal as well as ledger, okay? Next, we have sales ledger or sometimes we call them debtors ledger. We have purchases ledger or sometimes we call them creditors ledger and last but not least we have the general ledger so let's have a look all cash and bank transactions are found in the cash book as well as petty cash book so this is the same as in the journal so remember they have a dual function now what is in the sales uh, ledger 
you'll find all individual debts. As I'll explain more in just a bit. So what do you find, okay, uh, in purchases ledger or creditors ledger? So based on the based on this, you should know that it will be all individual creditors, okay. And last but not least, we have the general ledger. So what does it record? Basically, all other accounts, all other T accounts that don't go in here, here, and here. So why the need for ledger? Why the need for T accounts? Okay, now you must understand that for T accounts, they are very account specific. Like for example, utilities. Okay, so that's like a T account. You can see instantly uh, what is the amount that you spend on utilities. Now let's just say that if you don't have accounts, uh, T accounts, so you only have say the cash book, okay, as a journal, and then okay, subsequently as a uh, cash book is also a ledger as well, right? But the cash book has so many things inside. Okay, so Technically, if you want to search for utilities, you have to go through the whole entire list of the cash book. But this is uh, made. Uh, this is this is this is going to be crazy. So what you do is really maintain a separate utilities account. Okay. So this is the purpose of ledger. From journals, you post to ledgers so that you can be very very clear, uh, account specific. So you need to know. Okay, now I want to know. Uh, what is my balance for office equipment or what is the, my balance for loan? It is very clear cut because I just have to go and pick out the account, uh, whatever that you want. Okay, whatever account that you want. Just pick it out from the ledger and straight away you'll be able to know. Now, this slide is uh, specifically for the O-level students. All right, so N-level students, are, are you're not required to know this as of now. Okay, I just want to zoom into three of the five ledgers that I mentioned. So I'm going to discount the cash book as well as the petty cash book. Zooming into sales ledger or what we call the debtors ledger. Earlier on, we mentioned that sales ledger contains all your individual debtors. So you can just imagine this. Okay, you, so you have uh, so many debtors, you know, in person and sometimes in businesses, right? Because it can uh, happen uh, as uh, the debtor is a business, all right? So... You also have purchases ledger or creditors ledger, we call them. So you could have um, many, many different kinds of uh, creditors. Okay, so these are individual accounts. Okay, so why is it that there's a need to have them separated from the general ledger? From the general ledger. The reason is very simple because in a business, there will typically be a lot of people who owe you money. And there will be also a lot of people whom you owe money to. So we're going to take these people out okay all these businesses out and because one of the main reasons is that we do not want to overcrowd the general ledger okay so we take all of them out so remember just now we mentioned that general ledger may, uh, put you, you record all other accounts right so there's also one uh, two more items that i need you to know that uh, will be also recorded in the general ledger so um, i want you to imagine this you see there are so many debtors Okay, and they are all now out of this general ledger. So, there needs to be a representation, a representative, you can, you can call it, a representative uh, into the general ledger to represent the whole entire debtor's ledger. Okay, so we're going to send this representative in. We call this the total debtors. Okay, uh, in, in uh, the account is actually called debtors control account or sometimes we call it sales ledger control account now this control account will record all your debtors okay so the the information in it is is recording all your debtors and this account will be inside the general ledger now likewise from the purchasers ledger or the creditors ledger we will also send a representative and only one account will be in the general ledger and that's what we call the creditor's control account or sometimes we call it purchaser's ledger control account. As you can see, I put a crown here. So it's really like a representative of all these people or businesses um, and then you put in here. So you see, it has the effect of not overcrowding the general ledger with all these individual debtors and creditors. Okay, so you just have one representative in here and that will be the total. All right. Alright, so to round up, for source documents, um, journals as well as ledgers, I want you to remember this three digits, 875. 
well, they are not some lucky numbers, neither are they any block numbers or anything of that sort, but they are really numbers important for you to remember source documents, journals, and ledgers. Eight what? Eight source documents. There are seven journals and there are five ledgers. I hope you can remember this. So I've come to the end of this video lesson, so I hope that it has already provided you with a clearer understanding of source documents and how the source documents get recorded in the journals and how then it is being po or these uh, transactions are being posted to the ledger. All right? So that is the purpose of this video lesson. I hope that you have learned something from here. Thank you.